cerebral cortex, your cerebrum, is the highest center of CNS. We started this journey from muscle and how the muscle is controlled by descending motor signals. The conscious, the voluntary signal of that whole spectrum comes from the cerebral cortex as I have been mentioning all along. While the rest of the stuff comes from brainstem. So as you go from the muscle to the brainstem, then you go up. Brainstem, pons, and uh, on top. The right at the top is the cerebral cortex part of the cerebrum. Cerebrum as a whole is cerebral cortex plus the deeply embedded basal ganglia. Basal ganglia are defined in anatomy books as part of the cerebrum. Okay, so it's it's cerebral cortex, that thick cone-like layer of the cortex, which is uh, the, the famous face of the brain. And you know that it has a lot of convolutions. It's not, it's not a smooth thing. And there's a reason for that. They cover a lot of surface area because there's a lot of stuff coming into it and coming out of it. So there's a lot of surface area that needs to be covered. Uh, but the space in the skull is, of course, limited, just like the lungs. Lungs, huge surface area covered, but the thorax has a limited uh, limited area. So what do they do? They make lots and lots of angular. So this is the, the marvel of engineering. Same sequence happens in the brain. The convolutions that you see on top of the cerebral cord is actually to, to conserve area, the limitation of the area, to increase surface area. But let, let, let it be known that the surface of the cortex is very, very large. To give you some perspective, the, you know the difference between white matter and gray matter? White matter are the, 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 the transmitting cords, the ascending and descending pathways, simply put. Okay? Gray matter is the, the cell body of the neurons and its dendrites. They stain as gray, darker than the white stuff. All right? So a stat, interesting stat about the white matter is, if you were to take out the white matter of the cerebrum and connect it end to end, you know how long that distance can be? From the earth to the moon. One human being. How interesting is that? So you are carrying in only a part of your body so much wires that if they connect end to end, it's literally from the moon to earth. It's not distance. Can you imagine? And how it's distributed and how it's sort of, I can't find a word, just fit into, tucked into, designed or engineered into one part of not just a part of the body, one part of a part, i.e. the brain. We're not talking about the spinal cord. The brain, the cerebrum, that part. It's in number five. Anyhow, so in the first section, we've described the anatomy. So welcome to the highest point of what? The most complex integrating. What is integrating? You will find out today what is integrated. Hopefully. So this is what the usually the layman see when or, or think about the brain. This is that most famous view. This is the cerebral cortex. From today onwards, you know that this is the outer covering of the cerebrum or the cerebral cortex. And we have been talking about cerebral cortex a lot. In sensory physiology, whatever has been covered, all the stuff terminates here in a spe specific section of the cerebral cortex. All the stuff that we talked about in motor output, the efferents, come from here, voluntary at least. Okay? The red nucleus is sub-cortex, sub-cortical structure, it's under the cortex. So this is that view. So there are two clearly defined hemispheres, a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. Something that we'll be talking about, very exciting stuff. Who is left-handed in this class? Check this out. One, two, three. Three, just three people are left-handed in this class of what? 
I think in the late 90s was given to a scientist a doctor scientist but both hemisphere were working but they were working independently and the stuff that you need for uh, coming out of the crossover of the hemisphere was missing from that they inferred that ah, he can't do that or his visual is so interesting his visual fields were two separate visual fields I mean, you are getting one image. Your field is one whole image. His was not because his corpus callosum was vertically sectioned like this. So the right and the left eye were independent. How weird is that? But that told us what about how the the connections happen between the two hemispheres. Okay, and the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize was given to the guy who uh, discovered dominance. hemispheric dominance so the left the right handed people have the left hemisphere dominant and most of them most of us are right handed so we have the left hemisphere dominant it's an old language still needs to be told to you because got to mention that the new is something else the new uh, nomenclature is something else but however so these hemisphere are very unique in not just their the structures mundane it's quite uh, similar quite quite about 70 60% but the function are very very different so this guy discovered that got the nobel and his speech uh, he goes i have the quote we we'll, we'll get to that quote but it's a very nice quote yeah. very intelligent guy he goes my left side of the brain cannot find the words to express the happiness that my right side of the brain is feeling right side emotions left side language processing so in his nobel speech he mentioned his research in one line intelligent people are like that they can summarize very very nicely big stuff okay with that intro of hemispheres you i'm sure now are familiar with the sagittal cross section you will be doing this a lot in your anatomy classes okay 
Uh, and this big chunk here is the cerebral cortex. Okay, this is just another view. This is, guess what this is? Spike marker <laughs> Thank you, Abdullah. Which class would be less colorful with you? This is a functional MRI of the tracts of cerebral cortex. So all of the, I hope you, you, do you appreciate the colors here? Because these colors mean something. They are not just there as for fun. They actually mean something. So can you appreciate this blue? This blue, these blue fibers are connecting the, as you can see, the lower areas to the cerebral cortex. These are those fibers, those white matters that are projecting from down up. So look at the array, the whole thing, okay? This of course is limited, it's not a 3D diagram, so you can't have the whole view. But I think it's one of the very revealing things if you are studying the white matter of the brain. Then comes uh, the green stuff, you see the green? This green, this green and this green. This is same hemisphere, fibers linking the, the front to the back of the hemisphere, within the same hemisphere, okay? The pink stuff here, this stuff is the crossover, crossing over fibers between the two hemispheres. So this is where the corpus callosum is mentioned. So this, this diagram I found fascinating. Okay, overall summary, this is where the SCQ comes from, it comes about. When you were asked about, what is the function of cerebral cortex? Now imagine, imagine if you're asked to somehow summarize the function of water. How can you summarize function of water in a few, a few bits? It's, it's, it's difficult. The most off-throwing questions are the simple ones. If you think about it. So to, to summarize cerebral cortex functions is a, is a bit of a task. However, a book, not Guyton, gives this list. So I thought it would be handy. Sensory perception, you know this. Voluntary control of movement, you know this already. Language, you don't. But inshallah, we'll, you will find out this Friday. Personality traits, a bit, not more. The rest you will do in behavioral sciences and psychiatry. And this whole thing, guess why he had to use so many words for function number five? When you have to use a lot of words, you're struggling to explain. Because the fifth function, the highest intellectual function, thinking, analysis, feeling, feelings evoking certain memories, etc, 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 all happens here. And this we know least about, okay? Simple, this list is simple, keep that for your exams, but things of course are not very simple. So for example, this is where the cool stuff comes. You're going down Sheikh Zayed's ward or the road across or you, you, you find a 5,000 rupee note. 5,000 rupee note is a big deal in Pakistan, especially. What do you do? Let, let, let me have the funny responses first. You guys, I mean, generally your generation is very, you, you like jokes a lot. Everything needs to be in a jokey form. Eh? I crack a joke, everyone becomes alive. Anyhow, so, you found that note. You know the value. So as soon as the visual of the note came on your retina, it was transmitted to the occipital lobe. As I mentioned yesterday, the, the back, the back of the head. There, it was processed. Just the vision, the look, the image of the of the node was received in one section, 
processed in another, identified in a third section of the brain. Just the image. It took three separate, distinct, separate areas to just identify what this object is. I'm not talking about the value or the eventual decision that you made. No. Abhi sirf image ki baat hori. So just the image took three areas. What I'm trying to tell you is functions of cerebral cortex are very complex. It's, it's not really a simple list when you want to really understand it. So you identify it with these three. What now to do about it? Pick it up. If you pick it up, another section of the brain gets activated. And you know which section that is. You know that. The motor cortex, the pre-motor cortex, and the frontal. The frontal is activated throughout. Looking at it, opportunity. So the frontal lights up. I'll show you the picture of the PET scans, which they ran on brains working. So we actually know that a thinking brain has multiple stuff lit up in the brain. How very interesting is that? So while you're looking at the the thing, this lights up anyway, because what is this doing on the floor? It's intriguing for you. Our and the visual image is processed here. Now picking it up. Lifts up the motor cortex. Then comes the decision: what to do with it. What to do with it will lit up the limbic system, which is motivation and emotions, intentions, both good and bad, and the frontal cortex. Again, more. This is just this. This one little thing. How can you write it in one line? It's, it's difficult. But this is how it goes. This is how the brain works. This is how the cerebral cortex works. Finding money, oh yeah, concert orchestra example, very, very, very interesting. This is a, this is an issue, which hopefully someday one of my students will work on, the physician scientist. The issue is, the brain is full of neurons, and in a live brain, in vivo. We need, we want to understand, and there are like two, three mega projects. One in the European Union, and one in the U.S. They have a ten-year project started with 2014, around around that time, a ten-year project, which is very sophisticated, which uses all these imaging techniques in humans to work out high-resolution photographs and videos, trying to understand what goes on in the live human being's brain. So this is a current issue. Abhi 10 saal pure nahi hue. 2024 mein. So this is something that we are talking about a very live, hugely funded, uh, mega research project in of the world. The European one has enlisted 135 universities in the world. 135, and these are not your obviously small universities. These are big universities, and they've worked out one thing. I, I read it somewhere. They said. They are making a digital uh, copy of the brain, a digital brain, and they worked out that it will take thousands of computers to to manage this digital brain, and those computers haven't been invented yet, because the processing power of each of these thousand computers needs to be much more than what is available today. It's it's baffling what happens in this head of ours. So the challenge here. Is to work out how the whole thing works together. It's huge. It's they they are overwhelmed by this challenge. Let's let's make a simplified version of it. Can we work out how a simple neuron functions? We worked that out. We know that depolarization excites it, hyperpolarization inhibits it. We have worked it out. Now what they did is let's study a pool of neurons. How does a so basic ganglia? Many pools of neurons, but let's say take one pool. So they did some experiments, etc., etc. They're not happy. Why aren't they happy? They're not happy because of the orchestra exam. So you have gone to a concert hall to listen to an orchestra. I don't know if you know what orchestra means. Concert. Concert. Many musical instruments with three idiots trying to sing. Concert. 
Now, if you want, if uh, if this is an analogy of the brain, what they have been able to do maximum is look at the sound produced by one instrument, one neuronal pool. So imagine going to a concert and just be able to hear one of the entire orchestra. That's nothing. You want to hear everything. So the brain, the, the analogy is, there are mu these multiple neuronal groups. They not only work independently, but they also affect each other. So if you are to hear a flute separate in a separate musical piece, it would sound different. But when put in, in an array of musical instruments, it will sound different. The one who knows that this note is of the flute would know. Somebody who doesn't have intricate knowledge about music wouldn't even appreciate that. Yeah, This is the challenge. Finding out how the different parts of the brain, so that 5,000 rupee note example, or the or you, you saw a flower and you want to pick it, smell it, whatever. These, when these different parts lit up, how do they interact with each other so that we arrive at what we do, the action? The last example is even more complicated. A moving object. So a ball, a football, uh, a, a bouncing ball, or a cricket ball coming towards you which you have to hit or catch. This is very complex when you look at it from the brain point of view. Again, if this stuff is making sense to you and if you are interested in this stuff, please do follow up this, this sense that you are having right now. This, if it interests you, you have a bone called research in you. From, so purely from research point of view, imagine an image of the 5000 rupee note but not 5,000 rupee note, it is bouncing. The ball is bouncing, oh, like this, like this. Imagine now how would occipital lobe process this data? It works in frames. So one image at a time, not really, but let's understand this. So one image of this ball in one coordinate, then another coordinate, then another coordinate, and then back. The ball is bouncing, let's say, in a vertical direction like this and that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the cord, I'm simplifying this. So the cortex would work it out in these six frames, then put it together and make a video of it for processing. And the brain would then know, ah, ball is bouncing. And it's obviously instantaneous. When you see a ball bouncing, you know it's a ball bouncing. It is, all right, this is, this is too much slow motion that I've gone in, right? In the ball bouncing example, cerebral cord, uh, uh, occipital lobe obviously is lit up a lot, but at the same time, frontal cortex lights up again, and different areas of the brain lights up again. How does this happen? Why does it happen? Who tells the frontal cortex about the bouncing ball? Because the information is being received in the occipital lobe. Ye kider se aata hai? Usko kaun batata hai? and so on and so forth. This is the problem. Yeah. This, 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 look at this example, beautiful. This is an actual, these are actual PET images. Uh, uh, positron emission tomography, PET, PET scans on our, PET scans. In thyroid disease, they do a lot of PET scans just to see what's going on based on a radioactive material which is injected and then a PET camera which picks up gamma radiation which is emitted from that substance. So you inject the brain or the thyroid, whatever you want to study, with a known amount of radioactive material. That radioactive material is taken up by the cells and the ones who are more active, they emit more gamma radiation than the less active ones. So based on that, you can have a contrast if you're taking an image. Yes? Right. So in this image, the guy was made to hear stuff. Hear. We know that it's processed in the temporal uh, part of the cerebral cortex. You don't know this, I'm telling you this. Okay? So this area needs to get up, and it did. Look at this area. The red is like too active, very active. Yellow is less, green is lesser, and so on and so forth. There you have it. 
you have the develop activity as well right this is the whole image of the areas involved in hearing while the direct hearing is only dealt by this area here what about this area this 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 and this why did they lit up how did they lit up physically anatomically we don't know but this is what happens then and remember these research this research is important because if you can't see it you don't know what to do research requires some some thread if you see an anomaly then you can solve it this is an anomaly seeing up seeing this is the this is the front this is the back of the head so obviously this area would receive the image as i just mentioned occipital lobe this area will make sense of that remember the 5000 rupee note the bouncing ball all is 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 analyzed over here but what is this this is frontal lobe why did this lit up here because maybe can anybody make sense of it let's see how 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 can you connect this there is there is you can give an example let's say the 5000 would be example why did the frontal part of the brain got lit up any idea let me say this one another way what if there was a foreign currency rupee a uh, note over there would the same lit up happen in the frontal lobe well, memory motivation i have seen this before this i have seen this before is coming from the front this has picked it up processed 5000 rupee note pakistani rupee nice color you know the color we love the color all of this is coming from here that's why it lit up but how did the whole thing get got transferred instantaneously in the front view question okay what about this look at speaking so speaking and you will study this in on friday inshallah speaking requires this stuff and this stuff and this stuff so this is pretty straightforward speaking actually requires these three areas and they are confirmed on the pet thinking check this out what happens in thinking in thinking of course this area is very active but what's going on here what is this what is this by the way go on i thought it yesterday what is this area come on posterior posterior parietal cortex ppc yes the the coordinates are you got right the occipital lobe are right yes but this guide and mundane stuff you uh, we will just see how this whole thing works we'll try to release you as early as possible uh, this is not from guide and guide as a the newer version has a good diagram but it's not labeled which is very irritating it's not labeled in guide the different layers of cortex cerebral cortex is divided into six layers so with this knowledge already in your bank okay you will obviously thank abdullah i won't go into detail but look at the way they are arranged how are they arranged anatomically in layers like just like a dumbbell with horizontal right this is horizontal sir this 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 and so on horizontal this is an atom when we talk about function the functional layering or the function the function sits in columns not horizontal vertical so literally from the top layer at perpendicular vertically down is the functional column of the cerebral cortex so the layer which is uh, which is specializes in receiving sensory information the sari sensory information that was received in cerebral cortex the part of the cerebral cortex which is responsible for receiving all this sensory information will have an expanded fourth anatomical layer it will be vertical but the fourth layer will be biggest why fourth layer because fourth layer is a bit so we have two five acha wo kar diya hai mujhe this is the this is the fourth layer still itself there are still itself these ones 
these cells are masters of initial processing, not advanced, initial processing. And guess what you want to do with your incoming sensory information? You want to process it, which by the way is important that the most incoming sensory fibers enter layer four, as I just mentioned, most of the output signals leave cortex at five and six. Probably this was done in first year anyway, when they were teaching cerebral cortex. Did they mention this? So anyway, let's revise it. So layer four is your main sensory information receiving layer. Layer five and six is the motor output layer. This can, these can be MCQs by the way, okay? Layer six has so much connection with the thalamus that they have coined a system, the thalamocortical system. One, two, three are in, in intercortical connections. They are boring, I'm not interested. Anatomy, yes. So do read it in anatomy. So four, uh, four, five, and six are the key layers to remember when you're looking at cerebral cortex. If an examiner who has an interest in cerebral cortex, he would want or she would want to know whether you know that the functional stuff is vertical, not horizontal. Okay, so remember that. Again, this is that information. I don't think you have any remaining bandwidth of understanding to understand this. What simply is being said in these two, one and second slide is, uh, is, is, is what I've already said, is that the vertical functional processing layer has the most uh, profound section of the anatomical layer which it requires. Examples, layer four is expanded in the sensory perception area. So the cerebral cortex area dealing with sensory perception has most profound layer four. I think this is more easy to understand. The areas which are controlling muscles, uh, muscles, skeletal muscles, have the most pronounced layer five. Only layer five is a pronounced one. Sensory volume layer four is a pronounced one. This is how the function is established in cerebral cortex. It's not about the cell. It's not about neuronal processing. It's the vertical layer and function related with those vertical layers. 